It is no secret that we are getting less and less original content nowadays as major movie studios and streaming services prefer digging through our nostalgia. This nostalgia element can guarantee a certain audience for a movie or a show and is a perfect way of introducing those IPs to a new, younger audience. That is why reboots, remakes, sequels and prequels are increasing in number. Most of them do not live up to their originals, a very few succeed. I did not have that much exposure to international movies or TV shows when I was younger. I caught up with many American TV movie franchises only when the technology reached a point where any show was right there at your fingertips. I took this to my advantage as I watched the classic movies without any nostalgia goggles and saw them as just good movies. When I saw the latest trailers for the new Netflix series based on The Dark Crystal, I was intrigued. I had zero knowledge of its existence until then. Still, those visuals sparked something in me. Since the original movie was right there on Netflix for me to stream, I wasted no time and dived right into it blindly. Here are my thoughts on the film and what to expect from the upcoming Netflix series. I am sure there is a devoted fan base for the movie and its world. Bear in mind that I was completely oblivious to the importance of the crystal prior to and while I was watching it. So, my thoughts here are purely based on it as a movie. There will be no mentioning or analysis of the extended universe, which upon research I came to know that there is plenty. The Dark Crystal is a 1982 fantasy family adventure film based on a story written by Jim Henson and directed by Henson and Frank Oz. It takes place in a distant, unnamed world, populated with strange creatures and fantastic beasts. Fortunately, not those. The story follows a gulfling, no, not elf, gulfling with a G named Jen, the last of his species, allegedly, on a journey to fulfill the prophecy to mend the eponymous dark crystal before a celestial event which will stop the evil Skeksis to rule this world forever. I'm setting aside the plot for a moment and looking at the technical aspect of the movie. Many of you might know the writer-director Jim Henson as the creator of the worldwide phenomenon The Muppets. The world of the Dark Crystal is the brainchild of Henson. Inspired from the illustrations of the British artist Leonard B. Lubin, Henson created this magical world of crystal castles, mystics and strange creatures. According to Frank Oz, Henson wanted his vision to be as dark as the original Grimm's fairy tales and convinced it was unhealthy for children not to be afraid. The use of puppetry and art design in this movie are unparalleled. I think it holds up to this very day. The visuals are amazing. The nature, the culture, the flora and fauna. When we see the attention to detail to every minute thing on screen, both in focus and in background, we can assume the amount of hard work put into the making of this film. There are no human actors in this film, well, except for the stand-ins used in long shots. Still, the ingenuity of the puppeteer work brings the characters alive on screen. You should see the film to believe it. The degree to which these filmmakers and the crew realize this world with puppet work it is extraordinary. The locations, the background painting, the character designs, the costumes, the movements, hard work and love for the craft is noticeable in each and every frame of this motion picture. I watched this technical marvel in awe as I remember this movie was made in the early 1980s. There were no computer generated imagery to help. Relying on handcrafted probes to attain this level of masterwork, it is mind blowing. It's not like we cannot see that they are puppets. Lighting was the main culprit. We see them as puppets and feel like it is moved by people behind or under the frame, but that doesn't mean it is any less of an achievement. Now that the fact the Dark Crystal is technically unequal Marvel is out of the way, let's dig into the plot. It was here I think the movie struggled. As the movie was trying to create a grand alien world and a heroic adventure, it lost a consistent narrative. It felt like the movie was setting up scenes just to jump from one set piece to another. Above all, we don't have a clear sense of what this world is. There are so many unanswered questions. Why the Dark Crystal, which is actually a purple crystal, is linked to this world? What did the breaking of the crystal cause exactly? It still has powers. The Skeksis use the crystal for prolonging their life, sensing danger and a communicating device from time to time. If the Skeksis have got a crystal that has powers to give lasting life to them, why did they need to extract the essence of podlings and gelflings for longevity? If the crystal is alien, 
why did breaking it affect the nature of this planet? There is no clear impetus assigned to the powers of the crystal, which actually bothered me. Also, how did this Agra woman came into possession of the crystal shard? Why didn't the master mystic tell Jen his role in this prophecy earlier? He was with the mystics for a long time. He could have trained for what to come. Why did the shard react to Jen's music? Why did the protagonist decide to break into the castle immediately after refusing Chamberlain's request to come to the castle? So many questions. The sequences and dialogues are lagging, especially the exposition dialogues. They are in an epic voice and they sound awesome, but they don't tell us much. There is a Skeksis feast scene that goes on forever. Granted, it showcases the masterwork of Henson and crew, but I don't think it served, but I don't think it served much in the overall plot. Anyway, Henson's idea to scare the children was definitely successful. There's a podling scene that scared even the old me. As I said, the technical aspects and the puppet work are incredible, and I must commend the epic soundtrack by Trevor Jones. But not everyone can enjoy a movie without a gripping and convincing plot. But I'd like to look at the bright side. These unexplained or poorly explained points in the story can work in advantage to the upcoming Netflix series. From what I gather, the series the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance is a prequel to the original movie. It will be a good opportunity for the people behind the show to really delve into the mythology and make everything clear for us audience, or clueless binge watchers if you will. In a serialized format, there will be more room for the mythology to be explained in an interesting way. Unlike all those unwanted sequels like The Hobbit or The X-Men Origins Wolverine, I very much like to know what this world was before the events of the film, and hopefully get some insight into those blurred spots. It's good to see that they are honoring Jim Henson and his work in the new show. With the amazing puppetry and the help of advanced CGI, I'm sure we will get visuals that are best of both worlds. I hope Netflix will deliver an amazing show which lifts the way of the Dark Crystal for them. Did you like this video? If yes, like it, share it among your friends and subscribe to my channel. I wish to make one video every week. So tell your friends to subscribe too.